we are done with loose connective tissue now it's time for dense connective tissue under dense connective tissue we have dense regular connective tissue and under dense regular connective tissue we have yellow fibrous connective tissue and white fibrous connective tissue to be dealt with and we are going to compare both these fibrous connective tissue in this video first let's look at the name of the tissue dense regular connective tissue it is a type of proper connective tissue that is the connective tissue is proper what does that mean it means that this connective tissue contains all the typical features a connective tissue is supposed to have that is it contains cells it contains fibers and it contains matrix on which these cells and fibers lie upon now let's look at the name and split them and look at each words one by one first dense dense means the cells and the fibers in this connective tissue are compactly arranged second it's regular that is the fibers that is compactly arranged is arranged in regular fashion and not just scattered everywhere this type of connective tissue is categorized under two types you have white fibrous connective tissue and yellow fibrous connective tissue let's compare both of these okay so in connective tissue the fiber secreting cells are come on come on come on fibroblast why because fibro means fiber blast means precursor cell so fiber secreting cells are fibroblast wow okay so these fibroblast if they secrete collagen fibers the in that particular dense regular connective tissue then that's your white fibrous connective tissue why because the collagen fibers is made up of protein collagen and protein collagen is whitish in color which in which imparts white color and the connective tissue looks whitish in color that's why given the name white fibrous connective tissue similarly in yellow fibrous connective tissue the fibroblasts they secrete branched wait what did i say branched they secrete elastic fiber and elastic fiber they contain protein elastin which is yellowish in color so it imparts yellow color that's why the name of the connective tissue has been given yellow fibrous connective tissue dude the people next door can probably hear me that's how loudly i am crying right now Whew. i don't know if the speaker of my phone can pick it up or not my throat is dry okay second point collagen fibers so collagen fibers if we draw the diagram it looks something like this where the fibers are found in bundles they are bundled and it is unbranched that is there is one single fiber another fiber another fiber these fibers are not branched and they are found in bundles however in case of elastin fibers the fibers are found singly that is one fiber is found independently or individually and these fibers are branched next since white fibrous connective tissue is found in bundle that means it provides tensile strength while on the other hand yellow fibrous connective tissue provides elasticity because it is made up of protein elastin the name tells itself that it is related with elasticity property somehow now let's look at the diagram in the black box i'm going to draw white fibrous connective tissue what does the tissue look like it looks something like this so there's your collagen fibers which are found in bundles and the fibers are unbranched the tissue majorly consists of this fiber it has been given the name white fibrous connective tissue because it looks white due to the presence of protein collagen then there are few numbers of very few numbers of fibroblast the number of fibroblast is even lesser than that present in areolar connective tissue and then these cells and fibers they are present on a matrix shoot in elastic fiber or yellow fibrous connective tissue it consists of elastic fibers these elastic fibers or elastin fibers they are found singly and they are branched and then there's few numbers of fibroblast that secreted these elastin fibers elastin fibers 
they make up the yellow fibrous connective tissue with the word yellow because the protein elastin is yellowish in color and it provides elasticity. Okay, so we know that white fibrous connective tissue provides tensile strength. That means it has to be present in those places where tensile strength is necessary. For example, okay, to your bone, to your bone, muscle is attached. And the muscle is attached to your bone with the help of tendon. The tendon needs to have tensile strength in order to show movement in our body. Why? This is why. Suppose, suppose, this is my hand, right? For my hand to be lifted up, the bicep muscle has to contract. Once the bicep muscle, okay, it's relaxed. Once the bicep muscle contracts, the tendon which attaches my arm with the bicep muscle lifts this arm up. Suppose instead of having white fibrous connective tissue in tendon, it had yellow fibrous connective tissue. Then in that case, the muscle would have contracted, but the tendon would have stressed due to the elastic property of yellow fibrous connective tissue and it could not have lifted the arm. That's why tensile strength is necessary to be present in tendon. And that's why tendon is made up of white fibrous connective tissue. Also, the muscle itself is found in bundles. And these bundles of muscles, they are covered by muscle bundle sheath. This muscle bundle sheath is also made up of white fibrous connective tissue where it provides protection. The bone to which the muscle is attached with the help of tendon, that bone itself is covered by a covering which is made up of white fibrous connective tissue that is called periosteum, where peri means around or periphery and osteum is related to the word bone. So around bone, periosteum is present which is made up of white fibrous connective tissue. Similarly, in kidney, kidney is covered by renal capsule. Renal word is associated with kidney and capsule is a covering or encasing stuff. This renal capsule providing protection to the kidney is also made up of white fibrous connective tissue. Woo. In vein and arteries that is present in your body, they consist of three layers forming their wall. The outermost layer of the wall of vein or artery is known as tunica externa, where tunica means layer and externa means external. So the external layer, which is also made up of white fibrous connective tissue, where it provides protection. In case of your eye, the outermost layer of your eye, which consists of this white part, which is known as sclera, and the bump at the front, which is known as cornea. That particular layer, which is known as tunica fibrosa, where tunica means layer, fibrosa means contains fiber, is also composed of white fibrous connective tissue and provides protection and rigidity and particular shape to the eye. And then finally, your cartilage, the cartilage found in your body, they are covered by a layer of perichondrium. Peri means periphery or around and chondrium word is associated with cartilage. So around cartilage, Perichondrium is found, which is also made up of white fibrous connective tissue. <laughs> Next, yellow fibrous connective tissue. Where is it found? It is found forming the ligaments. So, a long bone is attached or connected to another long bone with the help of these ligaments. So, the end of one long bone is connected to the end of another long bone with the help of ligaments and these ligaments are made up of white fibrous connective tissue or elastin fibers which provides elasticity. Why is elasticity necessary here? Uh, let's suppose look at the diagram. Out of the two bones, one of the bones have to rise up. In order for that bone to rise up, the ligament that attaches the end of that bone with another bone has to be able to stretch so that this particular bone can rise up. That's why elasticity is necessary in ligament. And that's why elastin fiber is found in ligament. And that's exactly why ligament is your yellow fibrous connective tissue. Dude, my, th my throat is out of saliva. Oh, you gotta, you gotta subscribe for that. Otherwise, I'm gonna die. Bye.